Hello and welcome to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be doing a quick teardown of one of these devices. And you might ask, what is this? This is one of those digitized brochures that has the built-in video screen with uh, a built-in volume and speaker in it that basically advertises a company. So the idea behind it is it's basically a semi-disposable device that you basically use once and throw away after the product is no longer uh, relevant. Now this one's quite unique because it does have a charging port, so it is meant for reasonably long-term use, but uh, ultimately this is a product of the incredibly inexpensive uh, production of electronic devices in the modern era and the economy of scale of producing those. These are a little bit controversial to some people. Some people kind of view it as being wasteful to have all this, uh, all this electronic technology just destined for a fate in the landfill. But in my opinion, it's really more of an issue of just it's, it's cheaper to do this than to print a whole bunch of paper brochures. And it allows a whole lot more versatility in what you can do. So I don't really see a problem with these. Um, really nothing in here is going to be particularly hazardous to dispose of. And provided the battery is fully discharged when it's thrown away, it's not really hazardous to put in the mainstream uh, uh, waste disposal uh, system. So what I'm going to do today is uh, crack this thing open and uh, see what's inside and possibly even determine if it's something that could be hackable or repurposable since this looks like a fairly nice 720p most likely display. So here it goes. So I'm not really going to be too uh, graceful in removing this. I'm going to just maybe start from the top and try and peel back this display panel. It should just be secured together with adhesive. So we should be able to get this uh, removed. Looks like there's, uh, there's the internal structure here. Let's see if I can separate it from the bottom. It is still working. And yeah, so we've liberated the actual display panel from the rest of the brochure. And it looks like we have a little electronic uh, controller. It's got some flash memory and some RAM, and there's probably a microcontroller on the other side. A speaker here, looks like this is the battery here. Looks like a lithium polymer uh, cell, as I would expect. And uh, of course, then there's the USB, and looks like the touch button interface. It's important to note this is not a touch screen display. All the interfacing is done with these, uh, these tactile dome control buttons. So I guess the next step will be removing some of the plastic layers and just seeing if maybe there's like a, on the off chance there might be an SD card port or something on here. I suspect there will not be, but it's worth a look. So here's what it looks like with the paper bezel removed. You can see some super beefy, huge tactile switches. I mean, these are like fancy, nice switches. Additionally, you see the other side of the lithium polymer cell. It doesn't have an amp hour rating stamped on it from what I can see, but if you look closely down the end, you can see a small piece of circuit board, and this is indicative that it's most likely a protected cell, and that could be super useful in and of itself for another project. Now, I don't really see an active way to hack this device. Uh, the microcontroller is underneath the, uh, underneath the ribbon cable for the display, and it looks like all of the data is going to be stored on this flash memory chip. Now I did try connecting the USB connector to my computer and it was to no avail. It only charges the device. It does not uh, have any data from what I can tell. Of course it is possible that if you had some specialty proprietary software it might allow you to reprogram this for a different video. Now I don't know if this display cable is a uh, proprietary cable or if this is a standardized format it may be possible to get another display controller that you could custom uh, control. And I may actually look at another monitor part to see if it has a, uh, a suitable cable interface that might be compatible. But I'm guessing from my intuition that it probably will not. So having a look at this, uh, in terms of what might be salvageable and what might be useful, the display could potentially be salvageable, although if it's proprietary, it won't necessarily do you much good. The battery is probably the best thing in here. I mean, if you get one of these for free or find it in the trash, there's going to be a pretty good lithium cell that you could salvage for your own projects. 
it might be worth desoldering these tactile switches, and since these two are mounted on their own separate board, that might also be beneficial, although it looks like, since there's only two wires going to it, these probably have some kind of an encoder on there uh, in order to multiplex the signal, although it's quite possible it just uses some diode logic on it. The speaker is just a cheap little half-watt 8-ohm speaker. Uh, it could be useful for another project, uh, certainly. But uh, other than that, the actual uh, PCB is probably not going to be particularly beneficial, and the display may or may not be, but uh, I'll do some more investigation to see if that is something that might be worth salvaging. So a quick follow-up on some research that I did. Apparently a lot of these devices can be reprogrammed by putting them into USB mode, as it's called, and that means uh, it's a setting that oftentimes you can engage by double-clicking one of the buttons, and it'll switch into basically a USB mash storage device mode, which can then be used to transfer new files onto the device. Unfortunately, the device I had, no matter what combination of button clicks or holding down buttons I tried, would not enter this USB mode. I also tried shorting out a couple of jumpers on it, and once again, unsuccessfully, it would not communicate with the computer. So I ended up uh, just end ended up scrapping the actual circuit board and the LCD. The things I did end up salvaging from this uh, device are the lithium cell. It's not marked. I'm guessing by the by the weight and size that this is probably roughly an 800 milliamp hour cell. It is protected. It has protection circuitry on board, which would make it an excellent cell to use in a project where cell protection is required. I got the speaker out of it. This could be good just as a little low fidelity indicator speaker for beeping or whatever. I did take the two buttons off that were uh, wired on separately. These are connected using a 1K resistor, so one of the two directly shorts these two pins out. The other uh, bypasses through the 1K resistor. It's a clever form of analog multiplexing. And the last thing that I salvaged is the backlight. Although the display was proprietary, there wasn't any sort of a, uh, a standardized controller for it, the backlight could be driven quite easily from a 12 volt source. I've got a 10 ohm resistor in series with it just to limit the current a little bit. And as you can see, the backlight lights quite brightly when a, when a voltage is applied to it. So this could be good for like a light table or a backlit uh, picture frame or any, anything of that sort. Or it could even be just used as uh, ambient lighting in a in like a, uh, a table or a workstation. So I figured I'd hang on to that. So all in all, in this particular case, these were the devices that I found to be worth salvaging out of it. Uh, if yours does have the USB, uh, the USB programming mode, then you can try engaging that and then you could potentially use it as like a, a repeating picture frame or something like that. But in the case of the one I had, it was not particularly easily hacked and I didn't want to take the time to do any more advanced UART analysis or I squared C analysis with the oscilloscope on it. So for now, I'm just going to leave it at that. So hopefully you enjoyed this teardown and let me know if you'd like to see more teardowns of the type of consumable equipment uh, that I've shown today. And thanks for watching Dielectric videos. I'll see you next time.